Hey guys, so you know all the photographers and videographers who tell you it's not about the gear, it's about the photographer? Yeah, that's all lies. It's actually only about the gear. And I'm gonna show you why. So, to show you why, I'm gonna start off with a visual because I like visuals, that's, you know, why I make photos and videos. So anyway, a visual. Uh, and we're gonna start with this photographer I know, his name is Justin. So, Justin, why don't you take a picture of this setup that you have behind you, and since it's not about the gear, it's only about the photographer, don't use a camera. Without a camera? I can't. All right, interesting. So even though apparently it's not about the gear, that didn't seem to work out well without the gear. All right, let's, let's try it again. And this time, Justin, you can use this camera. Sure. There you go. All right, that time seemed to work out. And the photographer didn't change. That was a constant in this uh, little experiment we did. The only thing that changed was the gear. So I know that was kind of a silly example, but at the same time, it shows the point that I want to talk about. And that is that it is about the gear. Really, it's only about the gear. That doesn't mean before you start commenting about how crazy I am, it doesn't mean that having good gear is going to make you a good photographer. However, you can't be a photographer at all without at least a certain level of gear. That's how photography works. That's how this art form is. There was no photography until we had cameras. We couldn't take photos without the gear that we used to take photos. Now, I don't want you to get handicapped by thinking that gear is what you have to have to be a good photographer. That's not at all what I'm saying. But cameras, the gear that we use, they're tools. And just like with anything, you do have to have the right tool for the job that you're doing. If you're building a house, uh, I don't know anything about construction, but if you're building a house, you definitely have to have certain tools, hammer and nails or whatever modern tools they use to make houses. You have to have that to be able to make a house. If not, it doesn't really matter how good at construction you are. If you don't have tools, you can't make a house. At the same time, if you were to take those tools that a professional construction team would use to make a house and give them to me, I still couldn't make a house because I don't know what I'm doing. So there's a balance. You definitely have to have the right tools to even be able to start working on the project that you're trying to do but you also have to be able to use those tools and use them well. So you do have to have a certain level of gear. And I think this is where we tend to get caught up. And I think this is really the point that most people are trying to make when they say it's not about the gear, is that you have to be able to use the gear that you have available to you. You don't have to have the best gear to be a good photographer or a great photographer you do have to know how to use your gear and how to use it well. So one example of how this works is take a super high-end, very expensive professional camera and give that to a beginner. That beginner can put it in auto mode and point it at something, take a photo, and chances are it's gonna be a decent photo. Now, composition, things like that, they're not gonna be professional. But that's going to look a lot better than handing the same person that knows nothing about photography a camera phone from 2005 and telling him to take a picture of something. So there is a certain level of gear that you have to have. All right, so we've established there is no photography without gear. And your gear is a tool and you got to know how to use it. But you also need to be able to accurately assess what level of gear you need. And a lot of times it's a lot less than you think. And almost always it's a lot less than what camera companies are trying to sell you. 
usually for most people in most instances a used camera with specs that might not be so impressive compared to what's new on the market right now is plenty to do what you're trying to do for instance for a lot of my work, I use a 10 year old camera, a Canon 7D, but it does everything that I needed to do. And it really does more than I needed to do in a lot of situations, but it gets the job done that I needed to get done. And it's way cheaper than if I was buying a brand new camera. And then I can use that money that I would have spent on a new camera to put towards something else that's going to help me do what I want to do. So better lenses, for instance, or better light modifiers, flashes, speed lights, strobes, that kind of thing. And then I'm really more focused on what it is that I need and getting there rather than focus on a spec sheet and getting tripped up over that. So I think in the end, what I'm really saying is probably very similar to what most people are saying when they say it's not about the gear. But I think saying it's not about the gear is kind of missing the point. And also, it's easy to say that when you have all the gear. And it's hard to hear that when you don't have the money for all the gear. But if you think about what the gear is, a tool, and what tools you need to do the job that you're doing, you can save a lot of money. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Is it about the gear? Is it not about the gear? And if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button. And if you have hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you can see every time I make a new video. Thanks guys.